Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Luis. No problem. <laughs> so that's good. I have some uh, audio issues on this side. We've been having it all day. It's our first time, but I can see on your face at least <laughs> that you're online, yes. that you're <laughs> with us. That's great. Um, and uh, sure, uh, it, I think everyone on on uh, on the call can hear you. Uh, yeah. If I put on my mic here, it will go around here. But uh, please uh, let us know who who are you, Luis? Okay. Uh, well, uh, I am from Mexico. I am a Microsoft MVP in AI and developer technologies. Uh, I, currently, I'm living in Czech Republic because I am pursuing my PhD in artificial intelligence. Uh, I am working with uh, face detection, emotion recognition, uh, neural networks, uh, TensorFlow. And uh, well, yeah, it has been an interesting um, and quite uh, exciting uh, road these last five years. And uh, we say transfer learning with for deep learning, TensorFlow and machine learning.net. Yes. That sounds a bit heavy, <laughs> if you ask me. <laughs> but I, uh, I imagine you're going to make it easy for us. <laughs> yes, I hope. Uh, I hope that it is interesting. <laughs> and of course, if there are any questions, just let me know. Yeah, perfect. And we have a we have a breakout session, so people can join there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'll let you get started then, Luis. And uh, please, please go ahead. Okay. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you everyone for attending uh, this session. I hope that uh, all the event has been interesting for you. And well, I think this is the last session, so I hope you are not uh, tired at all. Uh, okay, so today my session is about transfer learning, uh, deep learning, TensorFlow and ML.NET. I already present um, or introduced myself. Uh, I might just add my email and also uh, Twitter in case you would like to connect or chat or talk about these uh, interesting topics. Uh, yeah, I would be glad to, to be there. Uh, yeah, just drop me, a, drop me an email or send me a tweet. Uh, I would be very happy. Uh, I might also add that I enjoy developing uh, mobile applications, mainly with uh, Samarin. I also work with cloud technology, mainly Azure, of course, and, and yeah, AI-driven solutions. Uh, I find Microsoft uh, technology quite uh, useful, amazing, and powerful. So, yeah, feel free to connect, please. So, let's get started with our topic. Uh, um, okay, you know that uh, we have uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and also deep learning. Um, a common task in machine learning is the supervised learning. Uh, it's a classic scenario. Usually, if we want to train uh, model A for some task, for some domain, we assume that uh, in our data, it is provided uh, tags or labels that are specifics, specific for, for this task, for, for this domain. Uh, let's say that if we want to, uh, let's say, detect or identify um, cups of coffee or items from a coffee machine, we will be provided with images that are found in coffee shops. Yes, so we have a specific task, which is to recognize uh, coffee items. Yeah, and the domain might be coffee shops. OK, uh, so we can train this model on these, uh, I don't know, thousands of images that we are provided, and we will expect this uh, task to perform very well on newer data that is coming. You got uh, some learning from the previous talk where you built a custom vision uh, model 
you provided several images for your training, then a model was created and you tested it with new images. There was some accuracy, there were some metrics which you would like to improve uh, by providing uh, new uh, images or, set or tuning some parameters. Okay, so we have this task and it's very specific or for it works for a domain. But if we would like to, uh, let's say, evaluate another domain or another task, of course, we need different images. If we want to recognize pets such as uh, dogs and cats, of course, the first data set, the one from coffee shops or restaurants, is, is not going to be useful because it's a different it's a different domain. So in short, each task and domain have their own uh, labeled uh, data, their own images. So yeah, that, that's, uh, let's say, a bit uh, obvious, but it was uh, need to, to, to mention it. Okay. Uh, so training an image classification model, of course, from scratch, uh, you know that it might take uh, setting several parameters. And of course, we expect to uh, need thousands of images. Uh, usually, the more we provide, um, it's, uh, it helps the accuracy. But of course, these pictures, these images should be relevant, should be significant. Uh, for, for instance, um, if the images are too small or too dark, yeah, or there is a, uh, uh, there are tags but that are not balanced, like, okay, maybe we provide 1,000 images of dogs, but only 50 for cats. Yeah, we have this issue. The, the tasks are not balanced. So, okay, depending on the task, depending on the domain that we try to solve, we might need a lot of resources. That's the key point of this. We need uh, compute, uh, compute uh, processing time, either GPU or CPU, depending on which uh, are, we are using. Uh, if we want to recognize uh, like uh, DCs from pictures, of course, we need to train this model uh, several days. We need to run our programs to make it like perfect. In this case, because detecting a disease, we expect uh, higher probabilities. So deep learning or even uh, machine learning models uh, are trained with a huge uh, data sets and yeah, we need a lot of uh, resources. That's uh, what I want you to, to take from, from this slide. Um, deep learning requires uh, high computation, and it's a common term uh, nowadays. So, would it be possible to, com coming back to our initial problem, to be, would it be possible to reuse some training that we did from task A and domain A and train a new model, different task, but maybe a domain that is related, would it be possible to, but that this new task is shorter or easier than the previous, previous task, would it be possible to reuse the computation that we did for just a small or some subsets of information? Well, the answer is yes, with uh, transfer learning. Let me explain this, uh, this uh, topic. Transfer learning is a popular approach in deep learning where we use pre-trained models as the starting point on computer vision and natural language processing tasks. So the vast compute 
and time resources that we develop uh, or we are required to develop powerful neural network models uh, can be uh, reused for newer tasks by, let's say, transferring what was learned in the first uh, task, in the first uh, exercise. Transfer learning is an optimization that allows a quick progress or even improved performance when we would like to model a new second task. OK, so you can see there in the picture that the second, the, the knowledge is the base for each of our tasks or for each of our models. OK, we might create a second model based on the first knowledge. Of course, the domain should be related or similar to in both models. Yes, it will not be possible to identify dogs and cats if we are using a model that recognizes restaurant items. Of course, yes, that will never be possible. But maybe we would like to determine uh, some uh, general like uh, elements such as uh, food that we can find in restaurants or uh, yeah so some kitchen items yes that, that would be possible to, to distinguish so the current uh, or traditional learning is isolated and occurs based on a specific task data sets and uh, yeah we obtain an isolated model the knowledge is not retained but in transfer learning we leverage this knowledge and what is knowledge okay if you know about the neural networks well you know feature selection uh, weight this is knowledge that we gain from the first task or from the previously trained model yes so we can train new models, we can tackle problems uh, that have less data. Yes, that, that is also important and you will see it in the demo in a few minutes. Yes, that maybe for the first uh, task, we use just yes, thousands of millions of images and for the second task, we only need a few, maybe less than 10 or hundreds. Yeah, that is also possible. So, so the knowledge is shared. That's the most important part. And, may, and maybe the data set is smaller. The second data set is smaller than from the first uh, data set. Yes, because he, we already have knowledge. You might compare this as learning uh, languages. You might remember that when you learn a foreign language, maybe English, uh, it was difficult. It took uh, much time. But then if you want to learn a, a second foreign language, it means a, a third language, that maybe, you already have some foundations. So it might be an easier task, yes? You can maybe reuse some of the knowledge that you gain, uh, maybe some skills or what worked for you when you learn uh, a foreign language. So this new task, learning a third language would be maybe easier for you yeah it, it also depends on the characteristics of the of the language but yes it will be easier so how does it work okay in transfer learning we first train a base network on a base data set and task then we delete what is known as the loss output layer which is the final layer that we use to make the inferences or predictions and we replace it with a new loss output layer for our general prediction it means that instead of predicting um, elements from the first task we will replace to uh, learn uh, sorry or to identify objects from the second task okay all the knowledge all the processing was done before we just need to change the 
or adjust the uh, final layer, okay? This last output layer is a fine-tuning node for determining how the training penalizes deviations from the labeled data and the predicted output, okay? And then we uh, change the purpose of these learned features. That means we transfer them to a second target network to be trained on a uh, second or shorter data set and task. This is important. Transfer learning works if the features are general, uh, meaning that they are suitable to or belong to the same domain. Yes. Um, and uh, uh, OK, so yeah, well, you will see this in, in, in a second in, in the demo. Uh, OK. So the most important part is uh, or one of the important elements are pre-trained models. So to solve the second problem, we need to have this pre-trained model of similar problem. OK, uh, you don't need to build a new model from scratch. Uh, we can use the, the model that was uh, obtained from the first uh, problem or from the first task. OK. Um, and well, for, for this demo, yes, uh, maybe you have heard about the Inception, Inception uh, network. Mm, this is this was an important milestone when we developed uh, CNN classifiers. Uh, I mean, uh, convolutional neural networks classifiers. Previously, when there were some competitions or algorithms that uh, detected uh, image images from thousands of, of pictures, um, they were not accurate or they were not uh, quick. So. A few years ago, Google developed several models that changed everything. There are several versions of Inception. Currently, there is Inception 4, I think, or ResNet. Maybe you, you know about this. Uh, every version of Inception is an iterative improvement over the previous version. Um, so you can see on the left uh, side a naive a naive uh, inception module that performs convolutions on the input. Uh, there are uh, three different size of filters, uh, one by one, three by three, five by five. And also max pooling is performed. These outputs are then joined or concatenated and sent to the next inception module. And this is uh, recursive. So, of course, this is uh, a bit uh, expensive in computational uh, terms. So when this inception network was built to make it cheaper, the author's uh, limit, you can see that in second uh, picture, limit the number of the input channels by adding, adding a one by one convolution before uh, everything is three by three, five by five and so on. Uh, we add this extra operation, but uh, these convolutions are cheaper. So the, uh, reducing the number of input channels uh, help. Um, and well, yeah, using this uh, di dimension reduced inception module, a neural, neural network architecture was built, which is commonly known as Google Net or Inception in version one. So basically, you have mm, millions of images and the tasks. Of course, we are talking about uh, supervised learning. So we have several images. Yes, and there is a file, maybe a CSV or PSV file, where you have, okay, for image one, there is a dummy, for image two, there is a kit fox, for image three, there is an English setter. Of course, these tasks and images are not uh, related but yeah you you get the idea every image even there can be it is possible that in one image there are several uh, tags that that is possible yes so this is the the input data that you have of course again training these thousands of categories 
is uh, takes time and consumes uh, resources. So what would happen if we would like to create a second model image classifier that simply detects if in new pictures we have food, we have maybe a toy or some appliances. Do we need to train a new model with thousands of examples of pictures for food, uh, thousands of images for beer, uh, teddy bears or toys, or even thousands of uh, images for kitchen or appliances? Well, since there is already a model, yes, a neural network that recognizes objects in general, maybe we, could use, we can use that network to focus on our specific task. OK. So, yeah, we, we can and that is possible, yes, of course, with uh, transfer learning. So we transfer the knowledge that was gained in the inception model, yes, to recognize only these categories that we want. OK, that's more or less the, the idea. And well, yeah, we can use several frameworks for this. We can do this in TensorFlow. We can do um, or, or use so PyTorch, maybe if you want. And well, yeah, we can use also ML.NET for this transfer learning task. Mm, I don't know if you are familiar with uh, ML.NET, but uh, I will give a brief introduction. Um, ML.NET, well, of course you know that, uh, that .NET is the platform for building anything. You can create desktop, web, cloud, mobile, game applications, even IoT. And now you can also use the Microsoft uh, stack or .NET, sorry for machine learning uh, scenarios or for machine learning applications. ML.NET is an open source and cross-platform machine learning framework that is uh, aimed or target for .NET developers. Uh, you can uh, use it with uh, tools, um, Visual Studio for instance, you can create your own machine learning models in a seamless way. It is also possible to extend and integrate uh, TensorFlow in your machine learning uh, applications with ML.NET. And it is also a trust uh, platform that has been proven at a scale. And I will give uh, or explain this in, in another slide. Uh, you can start, you can learn about this uh, technology uh, in this link. Dot, dot, dot net slash ml and well there are several examples there are there is documentation there are uh, a lot of things that you can do there uh, as i said well ml.net runs anywhere is cross-platform so you can create your application and deploy it to windows to linux to even mac yes and also uh, take it to the cloud on azure or on on-premises uh, scenarios, yes, or even any cloud. Uh, it also supports uh, .NET Core, .NET Framework, and even Python uh, using bindings for Nimbus ML. And also a processor architecture is not a problem. It can work with uh, 32 or 64 bytes architectures. Uh, what can you can do with ML.NET? OK, you can do or perform sentiment analysis, uh, spam detection, product recommendations, image classification, which is the task that we are going to talk. Um, you can predict uh, prices, uh, detect frauds, common uh, scenarios with machine learning or even more scenarios. OK, so. Yeah, I, I can share the slides uh, later, so you might not miss these links, or you can take maybe a quick photo. Yeah, or, but I will share the, the slides uh, later with the organizers. So, 
Okay, yeah, you can use ML.NET in three ways. You can use the API, it means you can write C sharp applications. You can also use uh, the model builder, which is integrated in Visual Studio user interface, and you can also use the command line interface. Interface. So whichever uh, suits you, uh, you can use it without any problem. There are no limitations in the uh, packages or the code that you can create. Um, well, yeah, as I said, uh, ML.NET is enterprise ready, battle proven. Uh, it, can be, it has been used by Microsoft uh, internally for more than eight years. Uh, you can see it uh, in action. Maybe you have some experience with uh, chart recommendations in Excel, PowerPoint design ideas, uh, Bing app predictions, and also Azure ML Studio and Stream Analytics. And also uh, with customers, well, yeah, there are some examples there that use ML.NET. So most probably you have seen it in action. And yeah, you can integrate on use uh, TensorFlow, Onyx, and in the work is uh, integration with PyTorch. Yes, so it has been designed uh, since the beginning as an extensible platform that you can consume with other popular ML frameworks. Yes, and access uh, even more machine learning scenarios such as object detection. Okay. And yeah, uh, this is what connects what we were talking previously. You can use or integrate pre-trained models, uh, maybe deep learning neural network architectures, such as Google Inception, yes, or image classification or computer vision tasks. But there are also other uh, architectures such as uh, YOLO, you only look once, uh, recurrent neural networks, fast recurrent neural networks, uh, but not only from computer vision field, you can also integrate uh, libraries or architectures for uh, audio and speech. Uh, I mentioned that natural language processing was also possible and there are also other domains. Okay. So, yeah, now let's go to the code and let's go to uh, some, some, some part of, of, of solving our problem. First, how do we integrate ML.NET in our applications? Well, we can, uh, let's say if we are using the C-Sharp um, API, we just need to add the NuGet package uh, Microsoft.ML. Uh, the current version is uh, 1.5, yes, uh, which you can uh, simply uh, integrate in your project, and, and that's it. Uh, if you are going to use a specific uh, elements such as uh, data views or CPU math or fast tree um, algorithms. Yeah, you can also add these uh, other packages. Actually, for our task, which is transfer learning and image classification, we are also going to add uh, a few packages such as image analytics, vision, and also TensorFlow. Of course, because we are going to take a TensorFlow model that was already trained and integrated in uh, our new uh, image classification task. Also, you use this uh, library, uh, SciSharp TensorFlow Redist. Uh, otherwise, you will get an error that uh, the TensorFlow library are not detected. And if you are working with uh, a Mac OS, uh, you need to add the runtime for system drawing, okay? Uh, just in case you encounter that uh, so, some some issues that uh, the images can be read, uh, you need to add this uh, runtime. And yeah, if you want to later test this code, um, you can work with these uh, versions 1.5, which I think is the, are the last ones. Uh, and yeah, you shouldn't have any issue. Uh, actually, I had an issue with uh, the SciSharp TensorFlow. Uh, currently, it's in version 2, so I had to downgrade to this 1.15 version. Uh, maybe the newer version is not uh, fully integrated with uh, the Microsoft ML 
one. So yeah, you just downgrade this one and you will not have any issues. Okay, so we have a model. Okay, Be before, actually before, um, give me a second, please. Before talking about this uh, data, I might show you one model. Just give me a second, please. Um, okay. And my tracking is uh, here. We have this model. This is part of our data or uh, pre-trained information. We have an incept inception uh, TensorFlow. It's, it's a .pb file. And it it's a set of um, layers. Yes, it's a, you have their convolutional neural networks. You have an input layer, yeah, or elements. Yes, and this is the network. You, you see also that there are a rectified linear units. There is max pooling. You have the structure or the architecture of your identifies uh, images okay as you can see it's a huge one there are several um, paths that are performed there this is the architecture of our network yes the inception one so there is a lot of knowledge there are a lot of weights that were determined determined yes so, in our transfer learning, we are going to replace this softmax before the inference. Yes, we are going to use the knowledge again until this softmax uh, operation or layer. So this is part of our data. This inception model recognizes thousands of categories. Okay, it was trained to determine those. Now. We would like to create a new classifier that detects, okay, uh, this uh, may be the first row of pictures. You, yes, we have broccoli and we have pizza, but we would like to task them as food. Okay, so this is the objective, that in the new task, we want to identify food. That's the first label. Uh, we have other images, these teddy bears. We want to, or we are labeling them as toys. Of course, we also can provide other uh, images. And we have some toasters that we identify as appliances. Of course, these pictures, yes, the first model, the bigger one, can recognize them. It can determine, okay, yes, this is a broccoli, this is pizza, this is a teddy bear. Yes, they belong to the same domain. I don't want to say that they are they were also used as part of the training data set because maybe the training data set is not uh, available. But we have these images that the first model can recognize as broccoli, teddy bear, toaster. Yes, but we want to retag them, okay? We want to create a new model, a new task, but same domain. That's the uh, important uh, thing there. So, okay, we have just some variables to work with our data. Okay, we have uh, the assets folder because as you can see in, in my project, okay, yeah, I have some references to, to this folder. 
I have the assets folder, I have the images, uh, and yeah, you, you saw everything here. Uh, there is also a tax. Um, and well, yeah, the, this is the tax uh, file. Yeah, we have for each image um, the tax. But actually, you can see that this data set, let's say data set for task two, is quite uh, small. We only have um, around um, eight images that we are using for this new training. OK, so would it be possible to create a new uh, training from only these eight pictures? That's uh, what we are going to do. OK, uh, notice please that not all images such as Toaster 3 are included in the tags because we want to uh, use this Toast 3 as part of the test or evaluation. OK, actually you can see that here in the test tags. I will show you. Yeah, we, we have also some pictures. Uh, you can see here, OK, broccoli 2 is food, pizza 3 is food, Teddy 6 is toy. Yeah, oh, OK, actually the toaster one, I use it for prediction. <laughs> but 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 yeah, you, you can see uh, that, for instance, broccoli 2, yes, it will be used for the evaluation. Yes, uh, to check the accuracy in loss and so on. But broccoli, only the first one, is used for training. OK, I, I hope it makes sense. So uh, what's uh, what else? OK, we um, have a, a couple of classes uh, for the input data model. Yeah, we have the image path and also the label, which uh, let's say agrees with what we have in our tags uh, file. OK, this is the path or the file name and the label. OK, basically that's it. Uh, this is for input and for the output, which means the prediction. Yeah, we have the same two elements. Uh, path and uh, the label. Yes, but we are going to obtain the score and the predicted label value. It means uh, what is uh, the model? OK, we are using the model. The model, what does the model says say? OK, this new image, it's a toy or it's a, a food and so on. OK, so this is the result, what, what you would expect. OK, this is really important. OK, so we need to know uh, what are the input uh, settings or parameters from the inception model or from the pre-trained model, in general, the pre-trained model because maybe we are using another one, maybe from custom vision. I, I'm going to talk about that one later. Um, so here we have our model, right? You remember? Or yes. So um, OK, maybe yeah, it's not, not here, but uh, usually checking the documentation, we know uh, what is the height and width from the images? Uh, 2024, maybe yeah, also custom vision. Custom vision uses that one. Uh, in previous version, it was 2027. Uh, but these parameters, we might obtain them from the documentation of the TensorFlow file. Uh, in Google, uh, I mean, in where it is stored. Uh, it's important because our transfer learning uh, model needs to know these parameters to, 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 to read, yes, to know what to expect. Um, okay, it's the offset, yes, and the channels last is uh, So for the return, uh, we have to use uh, multi-class classification. Uh, what is multi-class? It's a task that we use to predict class of data instances. Uh, MSNet provides, provides 
us with uh, several uh, algorithms. Uh, there is entropy, multi-class trainer, which we are going to use. There is a naive base, uh, classification, warp one versus all. So you can use learning with several of them and compare, okay, which one is more accurate. Uh, okay, so yeah, this is like for later or further testing. Uh, simply select from the trainers collection and it needs uh, a label and the feature a column um, as input and output. Okay, well, sorry, as part of the inputs. And this is the most important part. Um, an ML.NET model pipeline is a chain of estimators. I am going to explain uh, several parts uh, of it. First of all, uh, this code creates a pipeline for the model uh, and trains the pipelines to produce the ML.NET uh, new, let's say, uh, model. All, there, are, there is also evaluation against uh, unseen test data. Okay, le let me explain. The first part is adding the estimators that we are going to load, resize, and extraction of pixels from the image data. You can see here, okay, load images. And we have the pictures folder, uh, the, the eight, uh, a, the eight uh, images, yes, that, that we have in our assets folder. Then we resize them according to the image width and height that uh, we made, we mentioned it in, in previous slides. Okay, we resize the images, then we extract the pixels. Uh, in this case, using the the mean. This is also part of the settings and also the channels last uh, to interleave the pixel colors. Okay, so this is just uh, data pre-processing, let's say. You, you can call it like that. This is common in machine learning uh, scenarios. Okay, so that's the first part. Then we add the estimator to load the TensorFlow model. You can see it here, load TensorFlow model. And of course, we provide this uh, PB file that I mentioned. Uh, we apply the input to a deep learning model and we regenerate an output uh, using the model. This task is known as a score TensorFlow model, yes, or, or a scoring part. Uh, when we use the model as uh, it in, in its entirety, the scoring makes the inference or prediction. But in this case, we are going to use, yes, all the TensorFlow model except the last layer. Yes, the, the last layer makes the inference for task one. And uh, you, you, you saw it here. The, the name of the output layer in the penultimate, let's say, element is softmax to preactivation. This name, this is the, yeah, the, the, the input. This is the one that we are going to replace. Yes, you can see output name. Um, yeah, here in the output columns. Yes, as part of the score TensorFlow model. Okay, so the output of this layer is a vector of features that uh, characterize the original input images. Uh, the feature vector generated by TensorFlow uh, is used as an input to the ML.NET training algorithm. And actually, yes, this is where the uh, new training starts. We add to the estimators uh, just, well, first some transformation. We map the string labels uh, to integer key values. So we are going to use this output column name, new input column name, and yeah, then the, the entropy, yes, which we mentioned in the previous uh, in the previous slide. And how do we train the model? Okay, uh, first of all, the data in ML.NET is represented as an iDataView class. 
Uh, iData view is a flexible uh, and efficient to describe tabular data, mainly numeric and text, for instance. It is worth mentioning that the data can be loaded from text files, CSV, or even uh, real-time operations such as uh, SQL databases or other type of files. In this case, we are going to use the load from text file and we are using the train tax TSV, which I mentioned earlier, okay? And this is just uh, loading data. The fit method trains the model by applying the training, training data set to the pipeline. Okay, in this previous uh, code, we just define the pipeline. What are the tasks that uh, are going to be, uh, let's say, implemented? But this code just is just for preparation. Nothing is executed until we use the fit method. And you can see here, pipeline.fit. Okay, this is the actual, uh, let's say, uh, part where, where everything is executed. And then uh, we can evaluate the accuracy after the training is performed. First of all, we need uh, to load the test uh, data. Uh, it's the same, uh, let's say, method loads from text file, but we can leverage, oh, sorry, obtain the data from the SQL database and so on. But as you can see, we are now using a different file, test, tax, TSV, with no header. Then we use the, the transform method from the model to convert uh, this test data into another iData view, predictions we call it. So these predictions are used for evaluation and you can see here the method, okay, multi-class classification dot evaluate. We are going to um, evaluate the model that was trained. We have it here in the ML context, yes using this new uh, list of, uh, let's say, um, images. Yes, the, the small subset that, uh, that uh, we are going to, 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 to use for evaluation. Okay, and the important uh, metric, of course, here is the log loss. Uh, it means, okay, for this new task, uh, what is the logarithmic loss? Um, it is a value between zero and one, the shorter the weather, which is closer to zero, is better or expected. And uh, this is like the uh, general one, but it is also possible to know a log loss for each class. And that's it. Let's run it. So let me show you. Yes. Let's run the application. So I can explain you a few things. Okay. So the training, of course, will take some time, which is the, where the fit method is uh, executed. But again, uh, the inception model was trained with thousands of images want to create another classifier, a shorter classifier, but which is, well, which is, let's say, effective and takes advantage of the previous knowledge, okay, that was gained when training this huge network. You can see it here that now with just this subset of images, yes, um, this is this these are part of the evaluations. Okay, this picture was detected as food with a 91% uh, probability. This second one, pizza, was also food, and the third one is a teddy bear, which is a, a toy. Okay, so from the this is like our new model. Okay, our new model. Um, was retrained, yes, to identify foods, toy, toys, and appliances. You can see here the metrics that I mentioned. Okay, you can see the log loss is quite uh, low. It's 
which is okay. It can be improved. How we can improve it? Okay, yeah, we can uh, use maybe a different uh, methods here in the trainer, or we can also, as you can see here, um, use other uh, parameters to, to tuning, maybe the history size or regularization, uh, optimization tolerance. We, we can make it to take more time, yes. Um, also, if we have weights and columns, we can provide them as well. Actually, every uh, method, sorry, each trainer algorithm uh, has their own parameters, so you can also check that with the documentation. And in the end, uh, there are also two pictures that I did not mention, but these are new images. This is a teddy bear and also this uh, appliance. And they were used for this new classification task that you see at the end. So this toaster four, this one, was uh, identified as appliance and this other uh, teddy bear, 39, was identified as toy. Okay. So, Basically, that's uh, it. I don't know if, uh, well, th there is a slide for uh, questions and answers. I hope it was not uh, too complicated. Uh, but what you should care about transfer learning if you are learning about uh, machine or deep or artificial intelligence? Uh, well, uh, Mr. Andrew, which I hope you, you know, uh, considers that uh, transfer learning will become a key driver of machine learning success in industry in the coming years. Uh, we are in the uh, unsupervised area, yes, or era, but uh, reinforcement uh, transfer learning is taking advantage for new uh, new scenarios. So we have huge models that are train, trained. Let's now make it possible to use them for a smaller task. And yeah, that's basically it. Uh, I would like to know if there are any questions. Uh, I would be happy to, to answer them. In the meantime, I leave you my uh, email. And um, yeah, if uh, something is uh, missing, please let me know. Thank you for, for your attention. I hope it was interesting. <laughs> Thank you, Luis. Thank you, Luis. Hold on. There, we're learning the audio <laughs> setup here. <laughs> uh, yeah, so if there's any question, please type them in, uh, or you could actually ask them straight out mm. in the channel. Uh, I don't think it's uh, necessary for you to jump into the extra channel we have. Yeah, I can meeting, take it. So. Yes. In the meantime, I can uh, say that uh, we can also use models that we obtain from custom vision. I don't know if it was mentioned in the previous talk, but the model that you created in custom vision can be exported to TensorFlow. So you can provide it as an input uh, of, of your uh, model. Uh, yeah, you need to adjust or, or work in your code a bit, but that is also possible. I, I have, well, I, I have to say that I had a few issues uh, using the custom vision, but uh, I might uh, try to solve it and show it later. But yeah, you can also export the custom vision model and put it here. Yeah, that's possible. Uh, I see a comment by me. Okay. Oh, if I think. Uh, oh, okay. Mm, thank you. Uh, yeah, I know it, it was a bit uh, technical, but I hope it was interesting. Let me know if I can help you later with it. Uh, so, do you have any good real life examples with work that you do in these kind of areas? Uh, well, actually, in the documentation, just give me a second. Uh, yeah, they they pro or in the GitHub repo, they provide several uh, examples. Uh, let me just uh, it here, maybe. And then, okay, yes. 
Internet. Ah, sorry. There are some tutorials here. There is uh, image classification, transfer learning. There is also another one for classify images. Um, and also in the sample repository, there are other uh, examples which I have not uh, explored uh, at all. But uh, yeah, they, they include uh, different uh, ones. This is this was for um, uh, determine if uh, floor was cracked or uncracked. So uh, it might be similar. Yeah, the only limitation is your imagination. <laughs> OK, well, we spent a whole sunny day inside learning new stuff. And I want to say thank you to all the attended and thank you to you, Luis, and all the other speakers. And hopefully we'll be in touch and uh, connect with each other and uh, do this again on a rainy day so people will <laughs> can stay focused. Yes, definitely. Thank you to the Azure Scani um, group for the invitation. I will be happy to collaborate later. Perfect. Uh, then I'll say thank you for this time and uh, speak to you again. <laughs> sure.